or you can direct them to one of the presenters. It doesn't actually matter. But um, we will start taking those down and uh, responding, them, responding to them at the end of the call. So as you know, we are here to talk about how to save sharks during Shark Week. Um, it is a, a big opportunity to communicate with people about sharks. Um, but I know one question must be on everybody's mind, which is, um, is this just about Shark Week? And the answer is a resounding no. There is a huge premiere coming up next week. It's this movie you might have heard of called Sharknado, completely based in science. And its uh, sequel is coming out next, next week on the 30th. So um, we will be addressing the Sharknado. Um, a quick overview of our agenda. We are going to talk a little bit about who we are, who Upwell is really quickly because I know a lot of you are familiar with us. Um, give you a little bit of a high-level overview of what Shark Week is, and then dive right into the data that we have about how people talk about sharks online. And then we are going to pivot into some tips and tricks from our side, what we have seen work, and then also talk to you a little bit about what has worked for you. And then lastly, we are going to ask you to tell us what your Shark Week plans are. Um, as you know, when you registered, we asked you if you had a plan yet, and we're going to probably call in some people and ask them what they've got planned and what content they can share. Um, so with that, I will just turn it right back over to Rachel to talk a little bit about who we are. Hello. Um, Lots of you know a whole bunch, I think, about Upwell's work, um, but there's a couple of new people on the phone, so I'll give a quick refresher and overview. Um, Upwell is a nonprofit, and we are delighted that this is the third year we're running the Shark and R. We're excited to still be around uh, for a pilot project that was supposed to last year. Uh, hitting our third Shark and R birthday is pretty fun. Um, so we frame our activities. Um, as if we are an online PR agency, and the ocean is our client. And we're super lucky. Um, we have a great team here in the office in San Francisco. Um, Andrew David Dale is working from home today. Thank you. Uh, but Ray and Matt and I are all sitting in the office in San Francisco, um, and on the Twitters, obviously. Happy to be of service to you. And holy cow, you should see who's on the phone. Um, this is part of the people who are on the phone today, um, some of the many organizations that are represented. represented. Um, lots of friends there. And then there's this other slide of people that I couldn't even fit under the first slide or the logo got unreadably small. So this is the first year we've had to have two slides of all the people who are on the phone. And this is just the people who are um, affiliated or studying with institutions. Um, there's lots of awesome um, freelancers and indie people and um, shark enthusiasts who are affiliated with no organization but the organization of the sharks and so um, so we're excited to hear from everyone on the phone today about um, Shark Week plans and to help you all out um, do whatever we can to do that. And Alyssa, I hear that the audio is going in and out. Um, can you hear me clearly now? Feel free to chat in if there are still problems. Awesome. Thank you, Schiffman. I'm glad you can hear me. So Upwell operates in this little pink space um, between organizations, evangelists, and the media. Um, we try to work with everyone who is helping to speak for the ocean, everybody who loves the ocean. Um, and that's kind of the underlying assumption that instead of having a communications budget that is a number in some Excel spreadsheet somewhere, a number in a, in a grant proposal, um, our budget is the entire Internet. It's all of you. Um, we try to assume that um, it's a many-to-many -many communication, not just one-to-one, -one, and that we are stronger together as one great big giant team ocean. And we also think that um, if we're working as a team together, there's some resources we can provide um, that might not be available um, if everybody is just working independently. There's a big swirling sea um, that ocean communicators work in every day. Um, there's crazy stuff happening. There are unfortunately plane crashes and natural disasters and 
uh, wrapped album releases, which is not unfortunate. That's awesome. Um, but lots of big kind of weather happens on the Internet every day. And if we can work with an awareness of that and how our issues are doing overline, or, sorry, overall, um, we think we can be more successful. And to keep track of that, we pay a lot of attention to what we call social mentions. Um, individual mentions online, kind of like um, many news articles, we count um, tweets and Facebook posts, blog posts, mainstream news articles. Every time one of the issues that we track is mentioned, um, and sharks is totally one of those issues. We also track overfishing and marine protected areas, um, lots of other kinds of things, but today we're <clears throat> extra shark oriented. And we turn up all those little social mentions to see what the baseline of the conversation is um, and when spikes happen. And I don't want to blow the whole surprise of the shark at our, but uh, Shark Week is a really, really, really big spike. I'll let Matt talk more specifically about what that means. And we exist to help you answer the question, should I go surf today? Should you get out there in the wild waters of online campaigning? Um, and try and share your message. <clears throat> and in our first year of operations, we were trying to figure out when was a good time to campaign. Um, so it was summertime. We just went through World Oceans Day uh, 2012. We had high expectations for what was next to come um, in all of these different ocean conversations we monitor, um, the Gulf of Mexico, tuna, overfishing. And then, we came across some research <laughs> that implied that the biggest spike in all of the conversations all year was actually Shark Week, which surprised me. At the time, it just felt shocking. These days, it feels less shocking. So the answer to should I go surf today during Shark Week, uh, the shark is adamantly saying yes. And now I will turn the controls over to Matt who will tell you more about exactly why Shark Week is kind of a big deal. Thanks, Rachel. Can everyone hear me? All right, this is the State of the Shark 2014. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the shark conversation on the Internet, and then um, a lot about Shark Week. And there's going to be some Sharknado mentions so um, you know, as they say, shark happens. All right, so the Internet loves sharks. It's uh, about 50,000 uh, 60, to uh, 60,000 mentions of sharks on the Internet a day um, across online channels, Facebook, Twitter, uh, news posts, uh, forums, all sorts of things. Um, the conversation is really diverse, but you know, the Save Sharks part of it is a, um, a significant but comparatively small um, piece of that conversation. Um, Shark Week is, as uh, we're so fond of saying, the Super Bowl of the ocean. Um, I, as a soccer fan, I prefer to say that it's the World Cup of the ocean because it's increasingly global. Um, and in that shark conversation, um, the online influencers are not always um, shark-specific uh, uh, folks, although there certainly are um, wonderful folks who uh, concentrate on sharks um, all year round. But also there are other people who um, really are sort of on the wider team ocean, um, and they're also able to influence the shark conversation. So when we're talking about Shark Week and a shark in our, um, it's important to sort of uh, just ground ourselves. And, and remember that this is, this is really the longest running um, cable television event um, in history, as Discovery uh, Channel is fond of telling folks. So um, last year they had a record 53 million people tune in. Um, there's, this year there's 12 uh, all-new premieres um, and a nightly talk show, um, which, and throughout those shows they'll be uh, displaying tweets from people uh, using the Shark Week hashtag. Um, they've got three conservation partners this year, NGOs, uh, including Ghost Fishing, which talks about um, drift nets, um, Oceana, and One World, One Ocean, um, coming out some great um, ocean uh, videos and content. And Shark Week this year starts on uh, Sunday the 10th uh, of August, and it runs through Saturday the 16th. Um, and we're going to show you that perhaps the conversation starts a little bit earlier than that, but um, the shows themselves start on Sunday. 
All right. And this is a graph of all of the tweets um, from 2013 that mentioned sharks in the blue line and Shark Week in the green line. So you can immediately see that Shark Week is huge for sharks on the Internet. Um, this is a relatively simple keyword group, but uh, the takeaway is that um, Shark Week is your, is your moment um, to, to talk about sharks online. Um, and Shark Week is getting bigger. Uh, using historical data analysis, we have gone back in our uh, online time machine and pulled these figures. Um, last year, Shark, uh, Shark Week had uh, over 2.7 million posts um, across online channels. And there's uh, obviously reason to assume that it will just keep getting bigger. So the conversation is happening primarily on Twitter, um, followed by Facebook. Uh, I should say that these Facebook numbers are um, limited by, you know, these are just the posts that were set to public. Um, and so if a lot of people have their settings uh, locked down. So Shark Week themselves have said that, they, that their posts through the Shark Week Facebook page reached over 20 million people. You can compare that to your Google Insights, through your Facebook Insights, and see how you're doing in comparison. But the point is that these are the two primary platforms. Um, there's some others that uh, we can mention later on, but these are the two big ones. And uh, this is data from, uh, from last year, but basically this is a fan conversation. This is something that uh, you know, we have to remember that when we go into this conversation and, the conversa and there's so much attention and people are talking about sharks on the Internet and they're watching Shark Week, um, people are watching Shark Week because they're fans of sharks. Uh, and as much as we would like to, t to lead with the, the crisis that sharks are facing, um, oftentimes it's more effective to join them in celebrating sharks, um, to say yay, uh, and then to you know, engage them and, and hopefully move, move them along um, that pathway of engagement. So you can introduce more science to them and you can, uh, you can tell them more about how they can take action to save sharks. All right, so this is a graph that, whoops, jump forward. This is a graph that we love to show. Um, even as the slice of um, conversation about Shark Week that is specifically related to science or saving sharks um, is a comparatively small one, um, it's actually growing faster than Shark Week. And that's thanks to the sort of collaborative efforts of the folks on this call um, and the wider um, conservation and environmental community. Um, the point is that Team Ocean is growing faster than Shark Week is. And if we work together and we amplify each other and we, we pitch in during this great opportunity um, to talk about sharks on the Internet, we can continue this, uh, this progress. And who knows, maybe one day um, the actual volume numbers will reflect um, the importance of shark science and conservation. So, this is the last 30 days of hashtags that people have been using to talk about Shark Week. Um, the important thing to know here is that uh, the Shark Week hashtag is already um, the dominant one, and it's only going to get more dominant. So if you only have one hashtag to use uh, while you're uh, talking about uh, sharks during Shark Week, we suggest that you use the Shark Week hashtag. And each show, and this is data from last year, uh, each show has its own hashtag. And to answer uh, David Schiffman's common uh, chat question, um, we don't know all of the show-specific hashtags for this year. We're paying close attention, and uh, we figured out some of them and we have some likely guesses for the others. Um, but whenever you're watching a, a Shark Week TV show, they will um, show in the corner of the screen the show hashtag. So that's a good, that's a good time to set up maybe a column in Hootsuite or TweetDeck um, or just Twitter search and um, use that to, uh, to send your posts out to the folks who are paying particular attention um, to that show online. Um, this is hashtags from last year. In the center there you can see that Shark After Dark, uh, which is their nightly talk show, um, was happening every day. And um, for those of you who uh, were particularly outraged by Megalodon, um, you can see the, all the Megalodon tweets on, uh, on Sunday uh, the 4th last year, and then it actually comes back again um, towards the end of the week as people sort of did their retrospective posts, um, and a lot of that was um, 
after taking Shark Week and discovered the cast for showing a fake documentary. Uh, this is just uh, a little bit of um, uh, Internet Insider uh, data, but if you are wondering whether or not you should spell Jotham with an E, um, we've got you covered according to um, the data. If you want to be on the majority side uh, and sacrifice your decision to the will of the crowd, um, we suggest that you go with Jotham with no E. Um, that's confirmed both by an all-time Twitter search as well as uh, uh, Google Trends. So last year, um, as we said, Shark Week led off with um, a fake documentary about um, a very real but very extinct uh, megalodon. And there was a significant backlash. And so this, uh, we managed to um, put together a keyword set um, capturing all sorts of outrage. And it was about 10% at peak um, of, of daily posts um, compared to the megalodon posts. So 10% is pretty significant, um, but that 10% actually had a huge ripple effect uh, in the media. And so the backlash got attention, right? Um, people like Will Wheaton and uh, Nerdy Christie, that's her uh, Twitter name, I'm not calling her a nerd, uh, really kicked off this coverage, which then um, you know, got picked up in mainstream media um, all over the place. And you, know, you can just see, like, like Gawker was actually um, one of the first of the gates to show the, uh, the very fast disclaimer that Discovery tried to hide behind. Um, but there are all sorts of posts that came up. And I think that this has been part of the, uh, the reason that Discovery has decided to, well, number one, um, they're still showing a second uh, follow-up to Megalodon, so be on the lookout for that, uh, that secondary hoax. But um, it's going to be on Friday, and that's, uh, that's basically when like, you know, the White House will usually, uh, if they have bad news, they'll usually release things on Friday. It's sort of a PR play that you put things on Friday that you don't want uh, people to, to notice too much. So um, unfortunately, they got, big, um, they got big ratings for Megalodon, but uh, our theory is that's because it was the opening night of Shark Week, and the opening night of Shark Week always has the highest ratings of the year. So um, anyway, keep, uh, keep bringing them to task. And, uh, and know that your efforts have not gone unnoticed um, either by other folks on Team Ocean or by Discovery executives themselves. They're running scared. All right, so there are some, uh, some challengers to Shark Week. Um, some of you may, uh, may recognize this as a still from uh, the infamous Sharknado. Uh, Sharknado is back this year. And there is a second one that's actually in their title. Um, so Sharknado is premiering on July 30th um, as part of a uh, – Sharknado 2 is premiering on July 30th. Uh, there's also a whole Sharknado week, including such um, uh, presumably uh, horrifically awesome shows um, as uh, Sharktopus versus Terracuda, which is about a shark octopus versus pterodactyl barracuda. Um, Maybe David Shipman can uh, weigh in on the uh, comparative uh, strengths of those imaginary creatures. But um, you know, a lot of people are asking us, like, okay, is Sharknado going to be bigger than Shark Week? So this is data for the last 30 days. Um, Shark Week is in blue. Sharknado um, references are in red. Um, it looks pretty close, but um, our hunch is that this is going to mirror what happened what happened last year. Um, and this is data from last year. And you'll see that uh, Sharknado was actually trounced um, in online conversation by Shark Week. Uh, so you know, the Shark Sharknado gets a lot, of, uh, a lot of tweets. It has a great, very catchy name. Um, it didn't actually get that many viewers last year compared to how many people were tweeting about it. But um, you know, we think that this, uh, uh, this dynamic will continue this year. But Sharknado is making a strong, a strong play. Um, and if you want to tweet shark facts, real shark facts during Sharknado, um, you've got a whole Sharknado week to do so. All right, so um, to reiterate, this is a yay shark fan conversation. Um, the one, number one hashtag you should use is Shark Week, um, followed by uh, the show hashtags and save sharks. We also have a um, 
an in-house preference for Save Shark Week to sort of uh, harness um, some of the, some of the accountability uh, from the science and, and ocean crowd. Uh, and also, you know, this is the this is the biggest spike of the year for sharks. Um, if you need to uh, to adjust your work hours um, in order to stay home and uh, live tweet and come in a little late, we've got some ideas for how you might be able to do that with your boss. But at this point, I'm going to pass it over to uh, Ray Dearborn, and she's going to uh, take you on home. Thank you, Matt. Um, can, can I get a thumbs up that I'm audible? Okay, excellent. Um, well, this is my favorite part. I get to talk about what we do with all this information. Um, so first off, um, I want to plug this amazing cheat sheet that is a um, evolution of one that we made last year. And it's, uh, it's got all of the shows that are going to be airing during Shark Week with our assessment of whether they have conservation and science content, um, or if they're just out there to promote fear, or if, as you can tell, there's a Megalodon uh, special follow-up that is marked with our fake icon. Um, and the big caveat here is this is based on information that Discovery has released. We don't have actual pre-screeners of any of these shows. But, um, this should be your guide about whether you should be prepped to do myth-busting content or to promote science or to retweet discovery if it's an actual science show. Um, so print this out. Put it up next to your TV or your desk, wherever you're going to station yourself during Shark Week. Uh, and it's, it's your guide for how to tweet. Um, I'm going to Sorry about that. We are in uh, the heart of the mission in San Francisco, so firing happen. Um, there's also a couple of links on here to our toolkit and to the list of Twitter influencers that we put together. And um, all of that is going to be evolving. We are going to add more to the toolkit. Speaking of the uh, Twitter influencers, I just want to talk about two different lists that we put together. The first is Shark Week Super Tweeters. And this is based on an analysis of who actually generates the most conversation during Shark Week in conversation about Shark Week. And it is based on last year's data. So some people in this list may decide they don't want to watch Shark Week this year. Um, my guess is the actual Shark Week account will be tweeting this year about Shark Week. Um, but it's actually a good mix of humor and conservation and uh, official discovery accounts. So if you just want to set up a tweet deck column with this Twitter list in it, it's the people who are tweeting the stuff that gets retweeted a ton. Um, it's a great source of, of ideas for content, and um, it kind of gives you a, a flavor of what the conversation looks like. Uh, the other list that we put together is focused more on science and conservation. Um, we call that our shark saving influencers or shark saving tweeters Twitter list. Um, and it's been an evolving list over the past several years, and we updated it for, for this year. Um, the people that are on these slides are just a sample of, of the many people that are on the list. So definitely check out the, the list. You can go to um, the link at the bottom if, if one of my teammates would type that in. Um, that goes to a blog post that um, that links out to both of those Twitter lists. <clears throat> so over the past several years, we've got a few different tips that have, um, that have risen to the top for us. Um, and we separated them out here by Twitter and Facebook. But number one thing for, um, for the number one channel for Shark Week is Twitter. So most of the conversation does happen there. Um, the big, big thing is that you need to monitor the conversation, and that can be done in any variety of ways. On our team, we use TweetDeck. Most of us use TweetDeck with columns for different search terms. So I've got a column up right now for hashtag Sharkinar. And um, the great thing about TweetDeck is you can filter by popular content um, the number of retweets something is getting. So you can just surface the really popular content. Um, you can also put up Google Alerts for Shark Week, but you might end up getting about 
3,000 emails every day of Shark Week, so that might get a little overwhelming. But there's lots of different ways to monitor the conversation. The big idea is that you should be listening. Um, and that leads into the second tip there, which is to respond and really just respond with celebration because this is a fan conversation. Um, another huge thing is that you need to be online when Shark Week is on air. People are not um, tweeting as heavily during the middle of the day. Uh, most people are online while they are watching the shows. Um, this does mean that for those of you who aren't independent shark-loving um, shark savers, if you are doing this because it's your day job, um, then you might want to um, ask for a flex schedule. And we thought about that in advance and put together a little letter for you to submit to your boss so you can use it or adapt it. Um, but I think it's well worthwhile to say, hey, I'm going to be working in the evening hours so I can engage with shark fans and broaden our audience. So I'm going to come in a little late the next day. Um, so check that out. There's a link right there. Um, we also suggest that you echo each other's campaigns um, and your content, and keep an eye out for any shark saving content. Um, you know, have another column up in TweetDeck for Save Sharks, and amplify each other's content. It'll reach more eyes and, and more ears. And reward your super followers, the people who are retweeting you a bunch and really engaging and asking you questions. Um, call them out and make them feel really special because they are the evangelists for you. They are going to help spread the word. Um, and if they feel like you, you see them and you hear them, then they are going to be more likely to continue to do that. And on Facebook, the same thing goes. You want to share and cross-pollinate content and ask your fans to do the same. Um, and really on Facebook, the, the focus is more on visuals. So use, um, use as many photos as you can and, and videos, and especially those photos with uh, with text on them about shark facts and things like that. Um, keep it simple. Um, that's definitely what's going to work. Um, and because Facebook, you know, your your feedback is there for everybody to see. Just make sure that you respond. And that's um, if people have questions or if they are curious about what your position is on Shark Week, definitely engage with them. And then there are some other tips that came up during last year's Sharkinar, which were really, really great that we wanted to um, just repeat this year. And it was from people who participated and told us their, their feedback after Shark Week. Um, the first thing is that this is pretty taxing. Actually being on my live tweeting for a few hours is really, really exhausting. And um, definitely keep in mind that there are multiple time zones when we tweet the first night of it. We we catch the East Coast and the West Coast time. So that's a, a lot of hours of watching shark shows. Um, so yes, sleep in, drink your Gatorade, ask your boss to come in late, and, and prepare yourself with some pretzels and snacks and stuff like that. Um, the second tip that we heard is to engage with discovery. Even if you are not a discovery communications fan. If you think everything they are doing with Shark Week is horrible, um, it's actually more effective to engage with them politely, um, and they might actually retweet your conservation content. And it might be worth it to um, retweet their conservation content because for every um, tweet that they put out that says, is Megalodon still alive, they actually do share some really interesting shark facts and um, point people toward conservation organizations. Um, and I'm not saying everybody has to do this, but it has worked for several people um, that we've heard from. Another thing is to be proactive with the media. The media loves Shark Week. They love to write about it. They love to cover how popular it is. And the best way for them to know that you exist is to go to them. Um, call them and email them and say, hey, I'm going to be talking about this and I'm an expert about such and such. They aren't going to come to you. Um, they're going to be overwhelmed. So let them know you're available. Um, and I know, for instance, uh, David Schiffman who's on the line got a lot of media attention last year, and it's because he actually just reached out to the reporters and said, hey, I'm here and I want to talk about sharks. Um, humor and, uh, and sort of just 
lots of shark, weird shark language. That sort of stuff is how people talk about um, how how people talk during Shark Week. Um, speak their language, meet them where they are, and you'll get more followers, and that's more people to hear about what you're doing and then you've been. That's a really simple simple version of this, but um, it's it's a great way to reach this new audience. You have to talk to them in the way that they talk. Um, ask for what you want. Say, please, RT, please share. Um, please respond, whatever it might be. Don't be afraid to ask. And um, you don't always know what's going to happen at any moment during Shark Week, but you might know that probably there's going to be a moment when they air, they air something that's fake, <clears throat> for instance. For instance, um, they will probably reference shark finning. They will probably reference a lot of different con conversations, and you can be prepared for those. And we suggest creating content in advance for any sort of anticipated conversations, so that when they bubble up on Twitter, you've got your content ready to go. Um, I just wanted to spotlight a few examples of um, some conservation tweets that really worked last year. Um, they got a lot of engagement. Um, and you'll see none of them are really anti-discovery or anti-Shark Week, but they, um, they're very simple and direct and share facts and um, raise questions and make people laugh. Um, three of these are from uh, people I think that it might even be on the line today. Um, the average shark is still going. It is a great humorous Twitter account. Um, and I'm so glad it's still going. Um, and they actually shared some conservation stuff last year as well. So I'm going to take a deep breath <laughs> and cough. Um, we want to ask you what you're doing um, this week, uh, and I'm going to pass it over to Rachel to facilitate that. Um, just so you know, um, this is the moment where we get to, to hear from all 80 of you and that's going to be a lot of people. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to manage this through the chat and um, ask you to unmute yourself if we call on you. So passing it back over to Rachel. Thanks, Ray. Is my voice coming through clear? Thanks. Hooray. Okay. Uh, what Ray said is true. We have 79 people on this webinar, which is totally awesome. Um, and we definitely want to hear from you about what your plans are. Um, we're going to be taking various notes and recording this in case we miss anything that you say. Um, we're going to take all of the campaigns and questions that get shared in this section uh, and make sure they get shared back out with you guys um, to provide some visibility um, for everybody. And we're not trying to reveal anyone's secret campaign plans, uh, anything like that. But what we're trying to do is um, make sure that this community can really flex their muscles um, and get ready to retweet each other and turn up the volume on this conversation so we can take a big conservation bump. Um, we know because it's the third year going um, that this really works. Um, but it only works because we have some awareness of what's going on in the community. So if you have a campaign that you're working on or you have a challenge um, that you're trying to work out the details of, um, go ahead and raise your hand now. You can do that in that meeting controls. You know, there's a little thing over on the left-hand side. Raise your hand, and I'll, I'll call on all of you guys. Yay, I see you, Andrew and Andrew and Victoria and Chris Goody. That's super awesome. Um, and we've got a lot of awesome orgs on the phone too. So um, I know that uh, I was in D.C. recently, and I heard that Ocean Conservancy has some cool plans um, and Greenpeace is working on some neat stuff too. Um, and I, I suspect dozens more of you are. So uh, I'll just start calling on people. Um, and uh, get out your, your question or share your campaign with a link um, in a, just a minute or two, um, just a quick bit of time so we can get through everybody. Um, to unmute yourself, um, Chris Eaton, why don't you start? And you can push star 7, and that will unmute you, Chris. Is that working? And I know that um, Andrew Cornblatt, you have your hand raised too. Um, so if, if you're closer to control, you can press star 7 and unmute yourself too. Hi. Hi, is this working? Yep. 
Okay. Uh, so the Online Ocean Symposium is putting together a uh, Shark Week hangout with Nerdy Chrissy and a couple of other people as well. Talk about some of the stuff that happened last year, what we're expecting for this year. Uh, we are actually trying to get uh, somebody from One World, One Ocean to talk about the partnership as well. Uh, throughout the week, we are going to be pushing a uh, highlight reel and a couple of uh, meme slash uh, content creation UGC uh, challenges as well. Cool. And you're going to send us a link, right, Chris? Or, sorry. Yeah. Um, once the event page Andrew. is created, uh, we will definitely send it over to you. Awesome. We'll make sure it gets into the toolkit um, and into the tide report as appropriate. Um, and Chris, did you did you figure out star seven? I think so. Can you hear me? Yep. Hi, Chris. Hey. So I'm helping Greenpeace International and Greenpeace offices uh, around the world with Shark Week, and we're focused on how sharks are migratory creatures and need international protection in international waters. Uh, so that's that's fun. There's a lot there. Our challenge is, um, I've read that uh, Shark Week in Latin America is the week before, starting August 5th, um, and I can't get any information on when the Discovery Channel shows air anywhere. And so I was wondering if people had any information on how Shark Week plays beyond the United States. That's my challenge. Man, that is an awesome challenge, Chris. Um, does anybody on the phone um, have information? If, if you know about how Shark Week Errors internationally, go ahead and um, push star seven and just hop in the conversation or put it in the chat. Either one is fine. Um, and we'll do some research on that if there aren't any quick um, issues coming in, Chris, and, and get back to you. Thanks for that great question. Um, and there's a, a great question in the chat from Chris Reed um, about. Um, good, simple, easy online tools for people to create memes and photos with words. Um, I bet Chris, you, uh, you might have a good answer to that. And anyone from the Upwell crew is welcome to hop in too. Who's got an answer for how to quick, create quick memes? I, I have one. Star 7 to unmute yourself. Uh, if if I'm still on, uh, there's a couple web services I like, uh, but you can also use Google Docs and just create a one-page spreadsheet with a big photo and put text over it and export it as an image. Uh, mm -hmm. And then and then um, well, I can't remember the name of the page. Uh, Monkey. Pick Monkey. Uh, what's Pick Monkey is a great little web app for creating memes. Awesome. Um, and Andrew Kornblatt mentions also Meme Gene, M E M E G E N E, Meme Gene, and Pixlr, P I X L R. Um, we'll put those in the notes um, so we can create some, some quick memes that goes. Um, we will also upwell um, is going to know, as usual, about um, creating memes that are show specific and aren't upwell branded. Um, so we'll be tweeting and sharing those and amplifying other people as we go to make that easier for everyone. And uh, Kyle, I see that you, Kyle in Kiringham, um from Canada, you've got your hand raised. You want to um, star seven, unmute yourself, and tell us about your, your challenge or your campaign? Hey, can you hear me? You're very quiet. Oh, okay. Um, give me two seconds. Oh, is that better? Okay, great. Uh, yeah, so my name's Colin. I'm from the, the Starfish Canada. Uh, so we're actually a, a Canadian venture. Um, so what we're, and we're largely journalistic in nature. So what we're doing is actually we're going to be posting um, an article every day about Canadian sharks. Um, a lot of, as you know, there are some sharks that have only showed up once in Canadian waters. Uh, so some of these sharks are probably going to be more American than Canadian. Uh, but we're going to be posting these, and we're going to be pushing these out largely through um, our social media channels and trying to connect through the there's a conversation there. Um, and what I'll do is, uh, up, well, I'll send you guys uh, the link to our stuff as it kind of comes out, and maybe we can add that to the toolkit. But there'll be really different um, kind of some humor, some cartoons, some really fun stuff that will get people engaged with the conversation. So uh, we hope you guys enjoy those. Awesome. Thanks for telling us about a Canadian adventure. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and I see that Hannah Waters and um, Victoria Elena Vasquez have their hands raised. Um, go ahead and, and start seven and unmute yourself and tell us about your challenge or campaign. Hello, this is Hannah with the Smithsonian Ocean Portal. Um, so we're having kind of two things that we're working on. One is going to be a more a social media campaign, mostly on Facebook, um, that will be sharing information on shark biodiversity, so looking at sharks that are rarely mentioned on Shark Week, and generally combating bad science. And the second thing we're working on is we're going to be putting together um, an animated map tracking shark regulations over time um, in order to highlight some successes in shark conservation. So keep your eyes peeled for those. Great resource, and definitely send up well links. Um, and uh, Vanessa Barrington and Victoria. Hey, this is Vicki. Can you guys hear me? Um, so I'm with the Ocean Research Foundation. Uh, last week in San Francisco, we did um, an event for Shark Week at a bar. Um, it worked out pretty well. Um, I'm sending the link onto the chat right now. You can just kind of see pictures. Um, the one thing we could use help with is we're trying to figure out um, a location to do it this um, year because that bar no longer exists. And um, a lot of groups, um, are hesitant to do something for Shark Week because um, outside lands will just be um, wrapping up. And so I've got a lot of issues with people not wanting to overextend um, their staff. But um, the, the, the reason we want to kind of push it this year especially is because um, my lab, the Pacific Shark Research Center, um, Paul Clerk, Clerkin is going to be featured um, on Alien Shark. So if possible, we would really like this awesome event where um, him and maybe even um, my professor could be there in person. So basically, um, having a um, for the live airing, having people be able to actually talk to some of the researchers that are actually on the program that they're watching. So if yeah. anybody has any recommendations for that, that would be awesome. Awesome. Um, and David Schiffman shared in the chat um, that he was able to reserve a sports bar to watch Sharknado 2, which is an awesome idea. Oh, great. Okay, I'm going to meet myself again. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh, and I feel like, see that um, Kyle, you've got your hand raised. Do you want to hop in with your challenge or campaign? Oh, Kyle, I think you already shared. And um, Andrew Saylor and Kevin Connor. Am I unmuted? Yep. Okay, great. This is Andrew Saylor of Upwell and Southern Fried Science. and. Uh, we have a bit of a challenge this year because the International Marine Conservation Congress is happening at the exact same time as Shark Week in Glasgow, and almost all of our uh, big writers are going to be at the uh, conference, so they won't be able to do Shark Week in real time. So what we're doing this year is we're going to front load Southern Fried Science with a lot of uh, shark content, um, a lot of good debunking, uh, a lot of anticipatory stuff about what we expect some of the Shark Week programs will be about. Uh, and then we're really hoping that Team Ocean will help promote those uh, as they become relevant during Shark Week because we won't be able to monitor things in real time. That's awesome. Thank you for bringing up that challenge. And anybody else, Star 7, hop in with your um, campaign or challenge? I see um, Michelle oh. and Kevin and Claire. Am I off mute now? Uh, hi, this is Kevin Connor. Uh, I work with CI in our communications department. And um, thank you for sharing an example of one of our tweets uh, earlier. <laughs> it was really cool. To, um, we actually, uh, we're going to have our uh, chief scientist, Greg Stone, he's going to be part of Alien Sharks as well uh, for the second year in a row. So we have been working on uh, our overall message that we're getting out with a lot of the, 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 the Twitter conversation we want to start is sharks, uh, people need sharks. You know, sharks are important for people, and that's the theme that we're, we're going to be pushing out. Uh, we're going to be pushing out some new content on our blog, a blog from Greg about that. Uh, but we're also, we have a lot of older shark content that we're actually going to repurpose and we're going to put out via our uh, community page on BuzzFeed. Uh, and then this other website called the Dodo, and all those are going to be, you know, based around the central point of humans need sharks. 
And I, th I think we're also going to get grouped to live tweet during the Alien Shark show as well. Very cool. Um, it's very cool that you'll be, um, uh, or at least you're trying to live tweet during the Alien Sharks. Um, that will be a great um, uh, source for more research and more science. Yeah. Cool. And there's a couple more hands up. Um, uh, Claire, Don, and Vanessa? Hi, this is Claire Fackler, and I'm with the NOAA Office of National Marine Sanctuaries. And I just wanted to, this was something that was created by our webmaster at the time last year, but it's still pretty relevant. And um, we have a web page set up for sharks in our national marine sanctuaries. And um, there's photos of hammerheads and basking sharks and great whites and such, and where they're located around the country, as well as um, some interesting facts, you know, like from Freakonomics, where you're twice as likely to get killed by a vending machine accident than a shark attack, and, and then some of the best of the worst shark movies. And, so, and then we have also, um, we're part of the Thank You Ocean campaign with the state of California, and so there's several of podcasts that we've done or these video reports that are related to sharks or areas that have a large number of sharks. And those are featured on that page as well. So I'm happy to send out the link if, if folks think there's any value in sharing that information. Awesome. Yeah, definitely send the link. That sounds really helpful. And uh, hi, um, Don. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> hi, folks. Um, this is Don from Greenpeace USA. Um, so we're still finalizing our plans, but right now um, we think that our primary ask during Olive Shark Week will actually be uh, pushing certain tuna companies to end their connection to shark finning. Um, and so to do that, we'll, we'll be uh, pushing a petition. We also have plans to make a lot of really engaging and more positive images throughout the week that we are uh, excited and happy to share with anyone who's interested. And our team will also be doing quite a bit of live tweeting, um, both our campaigners and, um, and our, our online folks. Um, we're also planning on, doing, on coordinating with the Greenpeace Southeast Asia office as well, who will be promoting ocean sanctuaries to protect sharks. Um, and they will also be producing a lot of really great content that we're happy to share. And that's what Yay. we're up to. That's super exciting. Hi, this is um, Vanessa. You, Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, this is Vanessa from Save the Bay. Um, our challenge is tying Shark Week to San Francisco Bay. Obviously, a lot of people don't know that sharks live in the bay, but they do. Um, and our staff scientist, Haley, has worked on shark tagging projects. She's also worked on king tides. So she's going to write a blog post about the sharks in the bay. And then we're going to kind of do like this really silly, fun celebratory thing where we have this ridiculous shark costume and we're going to take, we have pictures of the shark like riding a bike and on a ferry and in Lake Merritt in a kayak and try to get a lot of attention on social media and then say, and by the way, no, sharks don't live in Lake Merritt, but they do actually live in the bay and, you know, here's the science and here, you know. So that's what we're doing and we're also going to try to get a media story about sharks in the bay because I don't think that that's really been covered too much locally. So we'll try with the Chronicle and see how that goes. And then we're, we're pretty small and no one has only a social media job here. So we won't be tweeting live and watching the shows because we also don't have TVs. But we'll be retweeting everyone else's content um, during business hours to kind of help out with Team Ocean. Awesome. Thanks for doing that. And we're trying to make it really, really easy um, to keep tabs on uh, Team Ocean's content because we know <laughs> there's going to be a huge amount of volume on that Shark Week hashtag, and we're anticipating lots of volume on the individual show hashtag. Um, so Ray took the time to create um, a Twitter list of all of the Shark and our uh, participants' handles. So um, there's a Twitter list. You can find it um, at FOL's Twitter account, and we'll also include it in the follow-up material. Um, that's why we asked for your Twitter handle when you registered, um, so we can make it really easy for you to find the other people um, doing science and conservation work um, and live tweeting stuff so you can, you can um, follow and amplify each other really, really easily. We're trying to make it not so hard to do this. Um, and it looks like um, there's so many awesome people. Um, and then, um, Michelle, did we get to you yet? Michelle, we saw. And uh, 
Uh, David Chessman, if you want to go ahead and um, star seven, unmute yourself and hop in. I think you've got some tips, uh, Mr. Why Sharks Matter, um, about what worked for you well last year. And it's star seven to unmute yourself. Plus, you might need to unmute your phone if you individually needed that. We'll give you a minute, uh, Mr. Schiffman. Um, love to have you hop in here. Is there anybody else who wants to share uh, a challenge that they're having or a campaign? Ooh, <laughs> ooh, I do. <laughs> um, it's, uh, this is on. Um, Go ahead. Okay. Sorry about that. This is okay. Michelle Weissel yeah. um, helping out the Gills Club with their social media campaign during Shark Week. And what we are, we're a group of female shark researchers who communicate with young women of, or young girls or even actually anybody who's really interested in sharks and wants to communicate with researchers directly. And I'm so excited for what we're doing for Shark Week because we're actually coming up with a comic strip where we're going to have and feature female shark researchers talking about the topic and talking about the specific sharks in general that might be featured during Shark Week. Um, so that will be on our Twitter and our Facebook page. And if Team Ocean wants to jump in and share it about and, or even has any great suggestions of female researchers and the species that they're working on, we would be super open to that. I love your enthusiasm, Michelle. That is super exciting. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and you're on Twitter at Guild Club, right? Yes. Fantastic. And Shuckman, did you figure it out yet? I think so. Did it work? Hooray! Yeah, I was hitting just seven, not pound seven. Sorry about that. Um, did I, I didn't want to interrupt the person who was talking, though. Michelle, did you, did you have anything else? Nope, I think she's already gone back on you. Thanks, David. Okay. Uh, so I wanted to talk a, a little bit about what worked and did not work for me last year. Um, last year I had a lot of success in getting facts out there, um, and a mix of most of the, and the, the strategy that worked was actually discussed during last year's Shark and R, so I'm glad to see this continuing. I think it's a great way to get people together, and I'm grateful to, to Upwell for organizing and hosting it. Uh, but the, I, the key points, most of them have already been made. You just join the existing conversation. Don't be too pushy or hostile and get the right information out there. I was contacting, I tried um, monitoring the Shark Week Twitter feed to see if people had existing questions, but with two and a half million tweets in a week, that's pretty hard. Uh, so I've, I've basically given up on that other than saying during the, during the shows I tweet, hey, I'm a shark scientist. If anyone has any questions, let me know. And I, I tried, but as Andrew said, we're going to be in Scotland. Uh, I tried last year to watch the shows live and provide a sort of a running commentary on what was being said and what was and it's it's just baffling the amount of easily checkable facts that they get wrong. I'm not even just talking about is Megalodon still alive, which is you know, obviously a, a willful misrepresentation for the purpose of getting ratings, but just little things like they say a black tip shark and top ten shark down last year. Uh, they say the black tip sharks can get up to 11 feet long and live to be 60 years old. No, they can't. That's not, that's not true, and that's not hard to find out. So stuff like that I like to provide running commentary on. Uh, but just putting yourself out there saying, hey, I care, I care about sharks. I know about sharks. I'm concerned that what's being said here is not correct can be a big help. Um, and talking, to, talking directly to journalists, if you, you can search Twitter for the phrase entertainment reporter, and you will get uh, a lot of Twitter handles for people whose beat is the media. So there, there's a, a, lot of, a lot of ways to do it. It sounds like a, the people here are working on some great strategies to complement each other well. Uh, and I've, I've written a bunch of blog posts. I've written a bunch of articles that will pop out throughout the week. I'm going to schedule some tweets uh, to air during some of the specific um, specials. The, there, there's a lot this year that I'm concerned about with, other than just the Medwidon special. The monster hammerhead 
is supposedly about a, a giant hammerhead shark that's been stalking the shores of Florida for more than 60 years. Hammerheads don't get as big as they claim this one does, even close. They live to be about 40 years old, so one hasn't been there for 60 years. And there's, uh, those of you who follow me on, on Twitter know that I'm, I'm very concerned about hammerhead issues. A, they just became the first species of shark to be listed on the Endangered Species Act. People are killing them for fun. Rosie O'Donnell killed one for fun. So I'm, I'm concerned that there's a, there's a hammerhead story that's important that's out there that Shark Week isn't telling and instead they're selling this other nonsense. And zombie sharks, there were some people asking about that on the Twitter feed for Shark and Art just now. That's about tonic immobility. When you flip over a shark, it sort of passes out. Um, and they're going to try to do that in a free-swimming great white shark, uh, which is not science and is basically animal abuse. No reason. So be, be critical of that. Uh, that's I'm, I'm rambling, so I think that's about all that I have to say. But I'm, I'm, you guys know how to find me on Twitter. I'm always happy to answer questions about things. Thanks, David. That's super helpful. Um, and uh, two things you said I want to give an extra comment on. Um, I was totally having flashbacks to live tweeting last year. Um, I do remember that there were um, lots of things that you were flagging and other shark scientists as just being incorrect. Um, scientifically in the shows, just little stuff as you were mentioning. And I think it's it's a um, it's great to have that as one of the content types that's in your mix. Um, just lots and lots of gentle corrections as required um, because sometimes they make mistakes. Um, so I think that's a, a thing to be looking for. Um, and I think our community is a really great source of um, what's really going on with sharks. Um, and then uh, the other thing to highlight is um, I love Shark Week because I think it's a great place to expand our audiences and go beyond our traditional targets. And I love, David, that you mentioned entertainment reporters. Um, Shark Week is so big on television um, that lots of people are talking about sharks who wouldn't normally be. And enter entertainment reporters is definitely a segment of the media um, to consider um, targeting with conservation or science messages. Um, when they're uh, engaging in the conversation online, think of those not just as you know, regular individuals that um, might want some more information, but um, as people who are looking for the entertainment story um, that's part of the, the giant spectacle that is Shark Week. Um, so those can make really good targets for stories as well. And um, I see that we have one hand still raised, Captain Chris Wade. I'm glad you're, excited. you're glad you're on the phone. Um, and I think we have time. We're we're three minutes over, but I'll take uh, one or two more questions before we close out. Um, if anybody has a challenge or a campaign they want to share. Awesome. Hey, thank you very much for hosting the Shark and I, and uh, and really appreciate everybody putting their time out. Just wanted to briefly talk about our campaign and what we're going to be doing over here on the Shark Boat. Um, uh, we are actually getting ready to launch an on-the-water actual research and real enforcement campaign that's going to be starting here in Los Angeles, heading all the way down into Central America and the Eastern Tropical Pacific. We're going to be shoving off here in October, but we are launching our, our public aspect of the campaign along in conjunction with Shark Week. <clears throat> we'll be releasing some footage uh, that's been taken over the years, some pretty incredible stuff and trying to again dispel some of the myths that are put out there over the, that week and uh, trying to increase our following and get some more people on board for the trip. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. Uh, and I see, Brett, you have your hand raised. From Ocean Conservancy. Hi, can you hear me? Yep. Perfect. Um, hi, this is Brett Nolan from Ocean Conservancy, and I just wanted to plug a quick thing. Uh, we are making a BuzzFeed article about sharks and I don't want to give too much away, but it will be really fun. It's going out the first Monday of Shark Week, and so just look out for that. It's um, very informative about sharks, but done in a more social media-friendly, engaging way. And we'll also be kind of sharkifying some existing memes just to get into the conversation. And I know we're still talking about action alerts here, and I know a lot of people are doing shark finning, but I was just wondering if anyone else out there is focusing on a different aspect that Face, uh, or a different problem that faces sharks that isn't necessarily shark finning or something maybe less common or less known? Cool question. 
Um, feel free if you're focusing on other shark issues other than spinning um, to include them in the chat, and we'll bundle all of that up um, into the toolkit and, and get you a, a good answer um, to your question. I'm sure that there's lots, a pretty big, wide range of issues that are um, being focused on. Cool. Thank you so much. Thanks. Um, and I see that. Uh, Oh, sorry. Thanks, Brett. Father. Um, Chris Eaton, you still have your hand raised, and you had a question that was about um, some campaigners who are hesitant to engage in Shark Week um, without permission from Discovery. Um, did you want to ask that or another question? That's the one. Uh, how can I put these campaigners' minds at ease about uh, trademark issues? Uh, you sure. know, use the hashtag, can we mention Shark Week in blogs? Uh, I think they're being cautious, overly cautious. Uh, but a third-party confirmation would be nice. That's a great question. Um, the evidence that I use personally is that this conversation is so huge, and um, Discovery Channel is very clearly um, pushing um, uh, their social media efforts. They want this to be a really big splash. Um, so I, I have not seen or heard of any trademark instrument stuff that's being brought against people, but if, if anybody has seen anything that's not me, please feel free to speak up or uh, share it in the ch chat. We'll see if we can find a, a better answer for you, Chris. Um, all right, so we're going to take all of the, the resources that you shared by voice and in the chat. Um, we're going to incorporate those into the toolkit. Um, we'll be um, queuing up uh, tide reports, that morning email um, that will have ongoing information as we get closer to Shark Week and we're actually in the Shark Week. We'll have updates with the show hashtags and things like that. Um, do um, look for that link to um, all of the Twitter handles of the Shark and our participants. That, that's the Shark Friends and Family. Um, and we try to make a, a good, easy list for you to get um, facts and conservation campaign information from um, to help amplify this message and make sure we make a really big spike. Um, and I think probably all of you um, think of the ocean to your client as sorry the ocean as your client to some extent, um, and we are honored to get to work with you. I'll turn it back over to Ray and to close out with a couple of um, next steps about what else is coming. Thank you. And um, I've been populating the chat box with a bunch of links that go to all of these. Um, <clears throat> keep following the Shark in Our hashtag. Keep sharing resources. It's a great way for us to talk to each other. Um, it's code for you know we want to do something awesome during Shark Week. Um, we've had several people joining in on um, taking notes. Uh, that's that second bullet there. Um, we're going to put a link to that in our toolkit. Um, we've also, you know, I just want to do it under plug for the for the Twitter list. It's a great way to surface good content. All of this is in the toolkit, and there is a link to that in the chat. Um, and you can also look on Twitter for it and Google it. You will be able to find it. Um, we're going to send the recording of this Sharkinar and the slides afterward, and. Um, we're also going to circulate it to those people who couldn't make it and have the link to the recording in the toolkit. So the toolkit is where to go. And if you have anything you want added or you think should be there, um, email us at tips at upwell.us. Um, and lastly, a plug for the Tide Report, which is um, I think how most of you ended up signing up for the Sharkener. But if, um, if you found out about the Sharkener through some other means, please uh, sign up for the Tide Report. It's upwell.us slash Tide Report. Um, and we're going to be sharing tons of great shark, shark, shark week, shark and our shark, shark NATO, all the shark um, content in the next several weeks and beyond. Um, so make sure you're on it. And I think with that, we're going to wrap. And I want to just say thank you so much to everybody for coming. Um, keep the conversation going. And if you've got any questions, feel free to tweet at us or email us or call us or whatever you want to do. Um, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, have a great Thursday. Bye.